All right, so we got a couple of proofs here. We're going to take a look at uh, proving that uh, a triangle, in this case, is isosceles, and this is using something called CPCTC uh, and uh, what we know about isosceles triangles. So to start off, hey, let's take a look at um, what we're given, right? And marking it on the picture is usually the best way to go. Okay, so I'm going to start off by uh, using a single arc to mark that angle one is congruent to angle two. Okay, and then RS is this little segment here. I'm going to say that this piece and TQ, which is over here, are equal. Okay, and then uh, before I get to writing anything down, right, we're going to write our givens down. That's going to be our first step. Okay, uh, we do need to kind of just figure out where we want to go with this. So let's just really quickly write down our givens. Just get that out of the way. Angle one's congruent to angle two. Okay, and RS is congruent to TQ. Okay, so that's what. Uh, we already know. Okay, there are probably some other things that we know, but that were not given to us. Okay, so uh, here's an example of something like that. Okay, actually, you know what? Let's take a step back. Let's talk about ARQ, right? If I if I look at my proof statement, a lot of times when you're doing proofs, you want to look at uh, how am I going to get to this answer? What are things that I need to know? in order to get to triangle ARQ as isosceles. So triangle, triangle ARQ is the big triangle. Okay, so here's what we know about isosceles triangles. Okay, If I can prove that any two sides of this triangle are equal, that would be enough to say that the triangle or the entire triangle is isosceles, right? That's the definition of isosceles triangles. Okay, Or we have the isosceles triangle theorem, which says that if the angles that if two angles are equal, then the sides across them from them are equal, and then if the sides are equal, that makes it isosceles as well, right? So we can use the isosceles triangle theorem to help us prove that two sides are uh, congruent. Okay, so our job is going to be to figure out how can I prove that two sides of this triangle are equal or two angles are equal. Okay. I'm going to make an educated guess here that um, because of the way that these triangles are drawn, that I'm probably going to be trying to prove that AR and AQ are equal, which means that I could also prove that this little angle R and this little angle Q, which are the s angles that are across from them, I could prove those are equal as well. Okay, So that's kind of like I'm thinking ahead a little bit and I'm trying to figure out, well, how can I do that? Okay, So here's what I'm noticing. I'm going to grab my highlighter. Okay. Uh, we'll get a little nice skinny highlighter. Okay, these little triangles on the side here, which would be this one, okay, and on the other side I have this little skinny one, which just kind of looks like it's the same. Okay, I already have one piece of information about those, right? I know that TQ and RS are equal. Okay, so what I can do is if I can prove those two triangles are congruent, if you notice, AR is one side. AQ is another side, and those are really our key sides. Those are two sides of this big triangle, right? So if I can prove that these two uh, highlighted triangles are congruent, then I can use CPCTC, which stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? I can say that uh, that these pieces are equal as well, okay? And then that's all I need to then do my proof statement. So I kind of worked backwards a little bit and said, well, what do I need to prove uh, ARQ and it looks like if I can I can work on these two little triangles here okay so let's start off with thinking about what I can do right I got one piece of information okay I have this side here right which is a part of those two little triangles and if you remember from just proving triangles are congruent here are your options there's side 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 angle side angle side angle okay and angle angle side right these are the four uh, non-right triangle ways, shortcuts that you can use to show that two triangles are congruent. It looks like I have one side, okay? Now I gotta figure out where's the other stuff gonna come from. And again, I'm not gonna write anything down yet. I'm just gonna kind of stare at the picture and try to figure out which of these it's gonna use, I'm gonna use. And then after that, um, we're just gonna write that stuff down, okay? So here are the things that I'm gonna use. Okay, the first one is, okay, uh, taking a look at this little triangle in the middle, right, the one that's got angle one and two, right, I have that the two angles at the bottom of this, right, of triangle AST are congruent, okay? The uh, isosceles triangle theorem, right, says, or I guess this is the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, says that if these two angles are congruent, then the sides that are opposite from them are also congruent, right? So across from angle two is this side right here, AS, 
Okay, I'm going to use two dashes for that one because I've already used one dash down here. Right? <clears throat> Cross from angle one is a t. Okay? And if you notice, that is now a second side of these two highlighted triangles. Right? So I'm going to use that theorem to figure out that a s is congruent to a t. Okay? And if I do it with just a quick inventory here of my options, if I have two sides that are known, it's probably not angle side angle and it's probably not angle angle side because those use only one side and two angles right I have two sides and I don't have any angles yet right so it's probably not these two so I'm either gonna prove that these triangles are congruent by side 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 or side angle side okay so I'm getting I'm getting closer right so now the next thing I'm gonna look at is okay well is it side 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 or side angle side well let's think about side 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 if I was going to do side, 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 I would need to prove that AR is congruent to AQ, right? Well, if I could do that directly, I would be just know that these two tri that this big triangle is isosceles and I'd be done, right? So that one really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And I'm also noticing for side, angle, side, that this angle right here, 3 and 2, that these ones are kind of like next to 1 and 2 and they're in the middle right so it looks like I'm trying to show that 3 is congruent to 4 somehow and if I can do that then that would get me a side angle side so I'm going to kind of put a little arrow here and say it looks like I'm going to prove these are congruent by side angle side okay I'm going to try to prove that 3 is congruent to 4 and I'm going to prove that AS is congruent to AT and then we have this given piece that would be enough to prove that these triangles are congruent so now that we've kind of like come up with a plan Let's start writing. Okay, so step two. Let's handle these uh, these two uh, double dashes, right? So step two, we're going to just be able to say directly that AS side AS is congruent to side AT. Okay, and the reason for this is the isosceles triangle theorem says if the sides are equal, then the angles across from them are equal. The converse of that is that if the angles are equal, that means across from them the sides are equal. Okay, so I'm going to use the converse. Okay, of the isosceles, and I'm going to do a little shortcutting here, isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, that's my way of not having to write all that out. Okay, so I'm going to put a little note here. I like to kind of keep track of this. This is another side that was key, right? Pair of sides. Okay, now I have to figure out this whole angle three, angle four thing. This is a little trickier. I'm just going to think, what do I know about angle three? And hopefully I can maybe incorporate angle one as well, because I do know some stuff about angle one and angle two, right? So here's what I know. Hey, okay, step three. Angle one plus angle three equals 180, right? If I measure those, and uh, depending on your teacher, they may ask you to put these little M's in here, right? The measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three uh, is equal to 180, right? That is the linear pair postulate, which I'm going to, again, be short just write LPP, the linear pair postulate says that two angles that are right next to each other, we call them adjacent angles, that if they are next to each other and form a straight line, that they will add up to 180 degrees, okay? I can then say the same thing, measure of angle two plus the measure of angle four also equals 180, and I'm gonna put those on the same line. They have their, the same reason, okay? And now, my goal is, if I'm thinking about what I'm trying to do, I'd like to say that 3 is equal to 4, and they're currently in different uh, equations, right? So I, I kind of, that's not helpful. I need them to be in the same equation. So I'm going to go through and say, step 4, the transitive property says that if two things are equal to the same thing, in this case, these two equations are both equal to 180, then I can set them equal to each other. So I'm going to connect these together by saying the measure of angle 1 okay, plus the measure of angle 3 that's this first one, is equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 4. Okay. And excuse my poor angle symbols here. There we go. Okay. So this is the transitive property. And because I had equal signs in between these two equations, it's of equality. Okay. Transitive property of equality, which you might have used POE for that. Okay. So I'm getting closer. Right. I now have 3 and uh, 4 in the same equation. Uh, now I just need them to be by themselves so I can say 3 equals 4, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this statement up here that says angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, right? And I'm going to do a little uh, definition of congruent, right? Oop, this is step 5. Yeah, let me get rid of that, okay? So this, the, the definition of congruent says if two things are congruent, then if I measure them, the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, okay? 
So this is just kind of a, a housekeeping thing we have to do. We can't substitute, which is what we'd like to do. We can't substitute congruent statements. We can only substitute equalities, right? So this is the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two because of the definition of congruent, okay? And now I can substitute one of these into this equation. I'm not going to substitute both, right? I'd like essentially the left-hand side and the right-hand side to have the same value so that I can subtract them away, right? So in this case, I'm going to make the decision to replace this angle 1 with an angle 2. I can do a substitution because 1 is equal to 2, okay? So step 6, we're going to say measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to and then I'm not changing the right-hand side. I'm just rewriting it out, okay? So what I did was a substitution, right? So this is, I took the the angle one uh, that was in, in step four, and I'm allowed to replace it with an angle two, and I did that. So this is a substitution. Oops, substitution. Let me erase that. That looks really bad, even for me. Okay, there we go. A okay, substitution, property of equality. Again, I'm just going to write POE, property of equality, okay? Now, we're almost done. Okay. It looks like I have a measure of angle 2 on the left and on the right, and we have something called the subtraction property that says if you subtract the same thing from both sides, that's okay, you're allowed to do that. So now I'm going to say step 7, I'm going to subtract 2 from this side and angle 2 from this side, and I'm going to get the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 4 using subtraction. Okay. So I did the subtraction POE property of equality. Okay, And now I'm just going to turn this back into a congruent statement. So in the same way that I, I turned uh, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 into the measure equals, I now can turn this measure of 3 equals 4 back into that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 Okay, using the definition of congruent again. Right. So again, this is just kind of a housekeeping thing. Right, we need congruent statements in order to uh, use one of our shortcuts. So I'm going to make a note here. This is one of the angles that's in those triangles that I highlighted. Feels like some time ago, right? This is an angle, right? And I'm going to go up here and mark these. These things are equal to each other. I'm going to use a double arc, okay? And over here, I'm going to use a double arc, okay? So there it is. Okay, I just showed these two triangles are congruent using S A S. So I'm going to write that down. Okay, I'm going to say uh, A S R, right? Step nine. We're getting there. Triangle A S R is congruent to, and it looks like that I have to call the other one ATQ, right? Triangle ATQ. Okay. And the reason for this is the shortcut, right? We have this thing called side angle side, which we just spent all of these uh, previous eight steps proving, right? So now we know the triangles are congruent, okay? And we just did all of that work so that I could say, hey, look, AR and AQ are a part of congruent triangles. That means that they are also congruent. So I'm going to move on to that step, which is like the key one of this whole problem. So step 10, I'm going to say that AR is congruent to AQ. I'm not going to forget to put lines over those. OK, this is your good friend, CPCTC, which again stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. OK, and then because I just showed AR is congruent to AQ, last step, that means that this big triangle at the top, ARQ, let me make sure that's what they call it, ARQ, right? I can say that means that's isosceles. That's the definition of isosceles, right? Triangle ARQ okay, is isosceles. Oops, I can't spell isosceles. Isos, right? Okay, and the reason for this is the definition of isosceles, right? The definition of isosceles says if at least two, uh, two sides are congruent, then it's an isosceles triangle. Well, look, on step 10, we just showed that two of them are congruent. Okay? So this one was f a fairly hefty problem. You kind of had to do a lot of pre-planning and figuring out what you ne even needed to prove. In this case, AR is congruent to AQ. right? And then we had to use this inner triangle to get one set of sides. And we had to use the linear pair postulate and some transitive property to get the other ones.